Have you ever had a coach tell you to perform static stretches to warm up better, actively recover, or to increase your flexibility? Cause you know, that's what they have been told. Well in this video, we're gonna go over why your coach or even you are wrong and how static stretching can actually hurt your performance. Apart from that though, we're also gonna propose some alternative solutions and no, I am not just talking about dynamic stretching. So stick it until the end of this video to really gain the most out of it. Let's start off as usual and break down the term static stretching. So static stretching basically is a sustained lengthening of soft tissue performed to increase the range of motion of that exact tissue. The stretch force must be applied continuously anywhere between 15 to 45 seconds in order for it to be considered a static stretch. Now many sporting people consider stretching as a must for recovery and performance, however research and basic sports physiology point us to a different direction. In the last decade or so, more and more coaches have become aware of the fact that static stretching does little to nothing for recovery and on top of that, it might also hinder your performance on the field. But why should we believe you, you might ask? Let's first dig deeper into why static stretching can be bad for football performance. Now, football is a game that is based on a variety of intense actions either with or without the ball that rely on fast and forceful contractions of your muscles. Latest research reviews point out that in sports just as football, static stretching can negatively affect the efficiency of those powerful actions. More specifically, it has been reported that the use of static stretches instead of dynamic and ballistic alternatives during a football warm-up can cause major reductions in those first 10 meters of a sprint where power is, is required, as well as the overall top velocity a player can reach while sprinting at longer distances. In another study that was conducted in 2008, it was even found that a no stretching group performed even better in those speed tests in comparison to a static stretching group. The research is still mixed though, with some studies claiming the opposite, but that is just how the research field works. That is why we can also use basic sports physiology in order to form a better picture around this topic and explain it. Although the reason that backs up this theory isn't clear yet, there are a couple possible reasons that we can find within sports physiology that can support it. So let's go over both. The first and yet most logical theory that backs up this argument has to do with the length tension relationship of the muscle. In fact, that is the reason many coaches argue that being too flexible can be detrimental to football performance. So according to this theory, every muscle has a quote unquote ideal length at which it is able to produce force and power more efficiently. With static stretching, you basically affect the length of the muscle fibers producing the movement, leading to submaximal outputs and less coordinated movement. But let's break down the science real quick. Your muscle fibers consist of factin and myosin, which are cross-linking and gliding on each other to produce movement. The efficiency of that cross-linking, which is a key factor when it comes to force and power production, can be directly affected by the length at which your muscles are stretched. Current research suggests that this cross-linking between actin and myosin within the muscle fiber is executed more efficiently when the muscle is close to its normal range of motion given that this is a moderate range. No end of the spectrum is optimal. Neither hyperflexibility nor being inflexible. The result of a muscle being overstretched is a less efficient length tension relationship which has been shown to reduce maximal force outputs. It slowly starts making sense now how the dynamic and ballistic stretching group as well as the no stretch one are able to produce higher outputs in comparison to the static stretching group. Apart from that though, there is an additional theory that is trying to back up this argument talking about a less efficient neuromuscular control. So what about that? Well, this theory is mainly related to the central nervous system. As we know, an overstretched muscle has a less efficient length tension relationship resulting in decreased neural activation. This can mess up with the sensitivity of your reflexes and can lead to an increase in the time needed between perception and action and therefore cause those decreases in velocity and power production which are key for peak football performance. Now what about recovery? Again, the majority of the current research is suggesting that static stretching has little to no positive effect on the recovery of a footballer as well as the reduction of injury risk. Fortunately enough, the data is slowly shedding light on the topic with more and more coaches and players shifting their focus onto recovery tasks and principles with a higher ROI. So to sum up this topic, no, static stretching doesn't seem to be offering any benefits performance or recovery wise and there are much better alternatives you can start using to see actual results. Let's go over them for a moment. So the first thing I would like to touch upon is the warm-up. In that first research paper we went over, 
we saw that dynamic and ballistic stretching had a positive effect on football performance. The reason behind that is simple. This type of stretching is really close to a warm-up method used in high-intensity sports you might be familiar with from our warm-up video. This method is called PAP or post-activation potentiation. With this warm-up method, the player typically performs game-like movements dynamically, moving the joints and muscles through their whole range of motion at a relatively high intensity, at least compared to static stretching. This doesn't only get your neuromuscular system fired up, but it also makes sure your muscles achieve the appropriate range of motion to perform the movements they are required to perform without getting overstretched. On the other hand, we shall also talk about recovery. Now, as we've said, static stretches have little to do with repairing damaged muscle cells. That is why it's important to shift your focus on tasks and principles of recovery with a higher ROI. Apart from the basics of recovery, which we have gone over in a video that is linked below, there are some other things like cooling down, foam rolling or performing mobility exercises to help you feel better, keep your muscles active, your joints mobile and facilitate blood flow. A really simple thing you can do is convert your static stretches into more dynamic ones by actively moving within the range of motion of the joint. So instead of staying locked in at a stretched position for 15 to 45 seconds, just perform them more dynamically going back and forth through the range of motion at an easy tempo. Now the next thing I would like to talk about is players thinking they are not flexible enough. For that, there are two things I would like to say. Number one, footballers don't have to be super flexible. In fact, hyper flexibility should generally be avoided in high intensity sports for the reasons that we mentioned earlier. And number two, these players may not be mobile enough. So it basically isn't a matter of flexibility, but mobility. Let's start off by saying that flexibility is not a determining factor in football performance. An athlete who trains on an almost daily basis and follows a well-structured warm-up is very unlikely to not have the needed flexibility to perform. However, mobility issues can be pretty common amongst players. So instead of performing static stretches to increase your muscle range of motion, aka your flexibility, invest time and energy into increasing the range of motion of your joints, aka mobility, especially the ones that are immobile, because as we know, decreased mobility drastically increases the risk for injury. To achieve this, just keep following a well-structured warm-up and add some mobility focused exercises and sessions during your training week. A tool that can also help you a ton if you're struggling with limited joint range of motion are yielding isometrics where you're basically adding an external resistance during a specific angle of your joints range of motion. You can basically think of it as a way to quote unquote work out your immobile spots. Now before you go ahead and start commenting like a maniac, there truly is one instance where static stretching can be used and that is during the rehab process. Although it still shouldn't take up a, ma a major part of your rehabilitation, it definitely is a useful tool. The reason for that is the long off period you spend resting and doing nothing, which can directly impact your performance as well as your return to the sport. So if you're getting back from an injury, make sure you re-establish your lost mobility and flexibility before moving on to more advanced stuff of the rehab process. Now before you leave, I also want you to watch this video to really master your warm-ups and never have to talk about mobility or flexibility issues again as a footballer. Until the next time guys, have a good one.